Hi, Alexi here. Opta 22 now offers Snappack controllers and I.O. systems with Wired Plus wireless networking. In this screencast, I'll show you how to get the wireless LAN interface on these new models up and running. Our new wireless hardware includes Snappack standalone controllers, Snappack rack mounted controllers, and Snappack EB I.O. processors. The new models are similar to the standard ones, with the addition of the wireless interface and a dash W added to the part number. One of the exciting things about this hardware is that we've added a wireless interface while keeping the existing wired connections. This means you have the flexibility to go wired, wireless, or both. In addition, you can use the entire Snappack system product line, all of our Snap Analog, Digital, and Serial I.O. with Wired Plus wireless products. Also, Opto22 Wired Plus Wireless supports 802.11a, b, and g wireless standards so you can choose the network speed and frequency range that best fits your application. In this demo, I'll be communicating both wired and wirelessly from a laptop to a Snappack R-W. For simplicity, I assign fixed or static IP addresses to both the wired LAN and the wireless LAN on my laptop. For the wired connection, I have a crossover cable running directly from the laptop to the wired Ethernet 1 port on a Snappack R-W. I'm using a 10.0.0.0 network. For the wireless connection, I have a wireless access point and will be using a 192.168.1.0 network. This is important because the wired and wireless networks need to be different from each other. Now, the wireless configuration is actually done through the wired Ethernet port, so you'll need to establish communications with the device on its primary Ethernet connection, which is the first wired Ethernet interface. Taking a look at my PAC R W, you'll see the STAT LED is blinking. This indicates that the primary Ethernet port doesn't have an IP address yet, so you'll need to assign one. Launch PAC Manager, which comes on the CD with the hardware, or you can download it free from opto22.com. Go to Tools, then Assign IP Address. When you power up a new Snap PAC controller or brain, it broadcasts its MAC address and a request for an IP address. MAC addresses are listed on the label on the outside of the hardware. I'll double click the MAC address of my Snappack R-W controller. I'll type in the IP address and the subnet mask that I want to assign to it. I'll use 10.0.0.22 and a subnet mask of 255.0.0.0. Because this controller won't need to traverse networks, I don't need to configure a gateway. So I'll leave that field blank and click OK. To send the IP address, I'll click Assign. To verify the address, I can click Test. This reply lets me know that my PAC hardware responds to the new address. I'll go ahead and close all these windows. For more details on assigning IP addresses, refer to Form 1704, the PAC Manager User's Guide. From PAC Manager, go to Tools, Inspect. I'll type the IP address I just assigned to the wired Ethernet port, and I'll click Status Read. This page is loaded with information, such as my hardware type and the firmware version. You can also see the IP addresses for the wired Ethernet 2 port and the wireless LAN interface are both currently not assigned. Let's click Wireless LAN, then Wireless LAN Configure. The first thing we want to do is enable the interface, so I'll select that. With WLAN logging, you can log errors and warnings, or even debugging information, to a microSD memory card in a Snappack device. Like a laptop, wireless Snappack hardware can network either wired or wirelessly. Laptops can automatically obtain an IP address from a DHCP server. However, the Snappack controller doesn't support DHCP, so you'll need to enter a static IP address. If you're on a company network, you might need to go to your friendly neighborhood IT guy for an unused, fixed IP address on the wireless network. So I'll type in the IP address, then I'll enter the subnet mask used on my wireless network. Notice that this is a different network than my wired LAN, which is required to avoid routing conflicts. My PAC R-W is on the same wireless network as my laptop, so I don't need to configure a gateway. 
I'm also not using a DNS or domain name server, so I'll leave those alone. All right, now we come to the network settings. I first need to type in the name of my wireless network. In this case, it's D-Link. Under encryption type, we have several options. First up are the older, less secure protocols, such as WEP and WPA. Opto22 also supports WPA2 slash AES, which is part of the 802.11i standard and provides the best security. Next, I can choose to enter my network key in ASCII or hexadecimal. And finally, I'll type in my very secure network key. Great. I'll click Apply. Pack Manager lets us know the settings have changed. I'll click Yes to save the settings to Flash and restart the device. Let's look at the LEDs on my PacR W. They're going to go off because my PacR has restarted. Remember, initially the WLAN LED was off, indicating the wireless interface was disconnected. Now it's turned orange to indicate that it's scanning for or authenticating the WLAN. Once it's up, the WLAN LED is solid green, like it is here. Cool. Let's click the View Status button here in Pack Manager. Here's further verification that our status is connected. We can also see very clear information about our signal strength. For further testing, I'll type in the wireless IP address up in the device name field. And now I'll click Status Read. Of course, we're still connected to the wired network as well. If I select the wired interface, I can communicate over the wired network. Remember, with Opto22 Wired Plus Wireless, you have the flexibility to go wired, wireless, or both. For more information, visit opto22.com and be sure to view the other screencasts in the watch section. Thanks for watching. See you next time.